is Ben Toman, and I'm with the Baton Rouge Astronomical Society here in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Uh, on a beautiful sunny day like we have today, uh, I was just wondering, where do the stars and the planets go during the daytime? Why can't we see them during the day? Uh, so let's go find out. At night, when we look up, we see hundreds, sometimes thousands of stars. Uh, it just depends on what the light pollution is like in your area. Uh, during the daytime, those stars are still there. We're just not seeing them. And that's because of the star that's closest to us, our sun. And that's really for a couple of reasons. Uh, reason number one, the star light that we're getting from those little stars is far, far dimmer than the light that we get from our sun, just because of how much closer to us the sun is. Uh, the second reason is as the sun's rays hit the Earth's atmosphere, they're actually causing it's scattered all throughout the atmosphere and actually kind of causes our daytime sky to kind of glow and light up. And that further blocks out any possibility of us seeing any of those dimmer stars. Now our sun looks incredibly bright to us for a couple of reasons. Uh, one reason is it's a lot closer to us than the other stars that we see in the sky. Uh, the other big reason is just the sheer size of the sun compared to us. Uh, for a little demonstration of that, we have this nifty little model. If this were the size of the Earth, then this is the actual relative size that the sun would be. So as you can see, the sun is many, many times larger than the Earth. In fact, we'd be about the size of that sunspot on the surface of the sun. It would take about a million Earths to fill up the sphere of the sun. Now, even the largest planet in our solar system, Jupiter, is still very small when compared to the sun. And for one other size comparison, I can show you that it would take 11 Earths to span the face of Jupiter but it would take 10 Jupiters to span the face of the sun. Now it is actually possible to see some of the brighter nighttime objects in a daytime sky. Uh, some stars, some of the brighter stars, for example, and the brighter planets. Uh, now, of course, the moon uh, for several days each month, you can see the moon in a daylight sky. Uh, sometimes it's referred to as the phantom moon. Uh, but Venus and Jupiter both shine so brightly that as long as they're far enough away from the sun, using a telescope, you'd be able to see them in a daylight sky as well. In fact, let's take the telescope out and see if we can spot some of these objects in our nice uh, bright blue daytime sky right now. Uh, now just a little disclaimer, uh, if you are ever going to use a telescope or binoculars during the daytime, you want to make sure that you don't point anywhere near the sun. Uh, if you point at the sun without a proper solar filter, you could really damage your eyes. Uh, so be very, very careful if you ever use a telescope during the daytime. So as you can see, is a beautiful clear blue sky day. I've got my telescope set up out here. I'm just gonna attach it to this little thing right here so it'll look through the eyepiece. And we'll see what we can see in a nice blue sky day. And here we are with some footage of the moon during the daytime. Of course, the sun is up nice and bright. It's about, well, it's before noon in the morning here. So we don't have very good contrast, but you can still see that nice big crater in the center, that's uh, Copernicus. Yeah, no kind of, no 
definition or anything around around the Terminator. Hard to tell whether or not anything's in focus very well. Let me just try and zoom in a little bit. See if I can see that. Yeah, there's that bay of rainbows there. Yeah, but once again, the moon visible through the telescope during the daylight hours. Now, of course, you can also see the moon with the naked eye during the daylight at this time. Sometimes they call it a phantom moon. That's well, kind of neat to look at. Beautiful day today. And here we have some video of the planet Venus. Venus is right now in a, I believe, a waning gibbous phase. So it looks like it's just a little less than half and it's shrinking down to a crescent Venus. And kind of difficult to find in the daytime sky but it is still up there Venus is difficult to a good cell phone footage of at the best of times during the day, it's even a little trickier. But there we had Venus. And here we have Jupiter in a blue sky. It's currently about maybe 10.30 in the a.m. Central Time. Sorry for the shakiness, that's just, it's a little bit windy here today. I'll try and zoom in a little bit more. Even in a daylit sky, it's a little, well, the contrast is not good at all, so don't know if any of the little cloud bands really come out via this cell phone video, but there it is, that it was Jupiter. Well, I hope that you enjoyed taking another look through the telescope and a couple of objects that we normally only look at at night. Uh, I also hope that you enjoyed finding out just where the stars and planets go during the daytime. Uh, once again, I am with the Baton Rouge Astronomical Society. Uh, we'd love for you to take a look at our website, uh, give us a like on Facebook. We've also got Instagram and Twitter and a brand new YouTube channel that you can subscribe to so that you'll get notifications when we do more of these videos. Uh, I'd also like to point out that we are a member organization of the Night Sky Network and a big thank you to them for providing us with these great materials that I use today in this presentation. So once again, I uh, hope that you all be well and clear skies everyone.